15 things you didn't know about guess. Welcome to alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers. We're very excited to have you with us today as we talk about one of the most groundbreaking fashion brands in history, Guess. Guess is a world-renowned American clothing company known for its high-quality clothes and fashion accessories such as perfumes, watches, and jewelry. Founded and headquartered in Los Angeles, California in 1981, the company employs more than 8,800 people worldwide, with a net income of $123.2 million as of 2006. The Guess logo is one of the most instantly recognizable logos in the fashion industry. It consists of an inverted triangle which contains a question mark and the company's name. The dot under the question mark is transformed to make another triangle, which renders the Guess. Once known primarily for its denim jeans, Guess Inc. designs, manufactures, and licenses a wide variety of men's and women's denim, cotton, and knit apparel. Guess products are available primarily in factory and retail stores in the United States and Canada, as well as through its internet store at Guess.com. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But enough with the intro. Okay, Aluxers, here's how one of the most iconic fashion brands got its start. Here's 15 things you didn't know about Guess. Number 1. Guess was the first to create designer jeans for department stores. Prior to Guess, designer jeans were unheard of in department stores. Customers didn't seem to have any interest in letting others know what brand their jeans were, but Guess changed the game with their telltale brand signature and design. Guess might have been around for 35 years, but there's still a lot you don't know about this clothing and accessories brand. So go treat yourself to a pair of the first ever designer jeans and take home a piece of fashion history. Number 2. The brand designed Marty McFly's custom clothing for the film Back to the Future. If you're a big Back to the Future fan, then you've probably noticed the distinct Guess clothing flash throughout the film. The Marciano brothers designed the clothing specifically for Marty McFly. Number 3. Big Cheeseburgers Inspired the Name Guess The founder, Georges Marciano, and his brothers, Armand and Paul, moved to Los Angeles in 1981. Georges came up with the company name after driving past a McDonald's billboard asking drivers to guess which eatery had the biggest cheeseburger. Maurice Marciano said, Georges came home and said, I think I found our name, Guess. Number 4. The first Guess store was opened in Beverly Hills. Georges Marciano and his brother Maurice arrived in Los Angeles and opened a clothing store in Beverly Hills. Born in Morocco and raised in Marseille, the Marcianos, who would be joined the following year by brothers Armand and Paul, had previously owned and operated a chain of 12 retail stores in France but had left the country in order to avoid a tax bill of approximately $9 million. The bill was finally settled in 1986. Among the merchandise sold in the Marciano stores were jeans designed by Georges Marciano. The jeans were meant to fit tightly and featured zippers at the ankles. Innovative for the time, the jeans were stonewashed, giving them a softer feel and lighter colors than typical denim jeans. They also featured what would soon become the distinctive guest triangle on the back pocket. By then, however, the 1970s boom in designer jeans had faded, and it seemed unlikely that a new entry into this tapped-out market could be successful. Number 5. The Marciano Brothers' worth went into the billions Guess went public in 1996 and still remains as much a family-run company as it was when it was founded in 1981. While being extremely obsessive and opinionated, Paul and his siblings, Maurice, Georges, and Armand, erected a denim empire by imposing their will on everything, the jeans tighter, lighter, and more stylish. The innovative marketing with the iconic and voluptuous Guess Girls, most notably Anna Nicole Smith, who turned a workman staple into a garment as seductive as lingerie, and yes, even the glowing lettering in the headquarters. When Guess's stock reached an intraday high of 57.20 in October of 2007, the siblings who owned nearly half the company were collectively worth an estimated $2.7 billion. Number 6. Bloomingdale's was the brand's first major order. 
Georges Marciano flew to New York in December 1981. Despite his limited English, he convinced Bloomingdale's to display a consignment 30 pairs of his European-style jeans in Bloomingdale's flagship New York store. Within three hours, Bloomingdale's sold out of every pair, despite a $60 sales tag. Guess's first big hit was the Maryland jean, pants with such a snug fit it had three zippers, one at the fly and one at each ankle. In just one year, sales hit $6 million. Number 7. Guess's advertising campaigns are well known for their innovative and creative images. Having been highlighted in international ad campaigns in nearly every major magazine, on television and other such mediums, Guess Advertising has been awarded nearly every Distinguished Design Award and the Metropolitan Museum of Art chose the Guess Press Book and Nashville Catalog for its permanent library collection. Guess jean sales took off spectacularly when Paul Marciano arrived in California to direct the company's advertising campaign. Although he had no previous advertising experience, Paul devised a campaign that revolutionized the way jeans and clothing were sold. Instead of adopting the typical studio design, Paul brought his brother's jeans and the models wearing them outdoors using grainy black and white photography and provocative poses, described by Forbes as catering to teenage cravings for sex, power, attention, and self-love. Electric, not only with sexuality, but with an implicit brutality and exhibitionism as well. The controversial ads and their sexy western look swiftly created household names not only of the Guess brand, but also of its models, in effect, starting the supermodel trend that would make many of the Guess girls, including Carrie Otis, Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, Ava Herzogova, and Anna Nicole Smith, international stars. By the end of 1982, the Marcianos had sold some $12 million worth of their jeans. Number 8. Guess had a huge legal battle with Jordash. The Marciano's largest legal battle was with Jordash. By 1984, sales at Guess had reached $150 million, with the price of Guess jeans climbing as high as $85 per pair, but the partnership between the two sets of brothers had already soured. The Marciano sued the Nakash brothers and Jordash in 1984, charging the company with unfair competition and claiming that the Nakash brothers were using their position on the Guess board of directors and their access to Guess designs in the Hong Kong plant to produce knockoffs of Guess clothing in their Jordash line. The Marciano suit asked the court to undo the 1983 agreement that had given the Nakashes control of half of Guess. The legal battle between the Marcianos and the Nakashes finally ended in early 1990 when a jury agreed with the Marcianos and returned 100% control of guests to them. A second trial was set for May 1990 to determine the damages. However, as the jury in that case was deliberating, the Marcianos announced they had reached a settlement with the Nakashes for an undisclosed amount of money. With the battle with Jordash over, the Marcianos set about expanding their business. However, the years of litigation and the enormous attorney's fees had limited their growth. The company believed that it would have topped the $1 billion mark in sales by its 10th anniversary had it not been for the court case. With their resources freed up, the Marcianos increased their advertising budget to $22 million in 1991. The company also expanded its retail chain to 33 stores by the end of 1991, including its European flagship store in Florence, Italy. Number 9. The brand Guess Suffered Growing Pains this was when George wanted to take the mass marketing route and his siblings insisted the label stay more exclusive. Unable to compromise, George sold his 38% stake in the firm and struck out on his own, founding rival Yes Brand in 1994. After George's departure, the remaining Marcianos continued to expand the Guess empire, producing golf apparel and home furnishings, in addition to its other licensing agreements for footwear, watches, handbags, eyewear, and fragrances. Guess stores opened throughout the U.S., including shops in vast outlet malls as well. Number 10. Paris Hilton Helped to Relaunch the Brand Paris Hilton was hired in 2004 to help recapture business along with the company's glamorous image. The company's website showed Hilton in various sexy poses. In the summer of 2004, Guess launched the Marciano chain, an extension of its brand Marciano that was designed in the style of sexy yet sophisticated apparel and accessories. 
Stores in Los Angeles, California, McAllen, Texas, and Toronto, Canada were open to serve slightly older customers interested in higher-end clothes and accessories such as glitzy evening dresses and fancy jeans. If you want to learn some more about Paris Hilton and other rich socialites like her, click in the top right corner. Number 11. Guests had to deal with nasty sweatshop allegations. In 1992, guest contractors faced litigation from the U.S. Department of Labor due to failure to pay their employees the minimum wage or adequate overtime. Rather than face a court case, $573,000 in back wages were paid to employees. Soon afterward, guests promised to monitor their contractors for illegal activity, and the company earned a place on the U.S. DOL's trendsetters list. But this position was suspended several years later, in 1996, after independent inspectors found violations of regulations at seven of the company's contractors. In that same year, the company was sued by the Union of Needle Trades, industrial and textile employees, again due to the failure to pay the minimum wage or overtime to workers. The settlement, supervised by the U.S. Department of Labor, saw the reinstatement of eight workers found to have been illegally fired and another $80,000 in back pay given to workers. But almost immediately afterward, Guess announced it was moving its sewing production to Mexico. The company denied that the move was related to the court cases, but its public image continued to suffer. Guess has seen its fair share of controversies over the years. The brand has had to do some serious positive press, and it seems to have done the trick. Number 12. Two of the Marciano brothers still run the company today, but not without controversy. Georges left in a huff in 1993 after selling his stake to his brothers. An exile living in Montreal, he's now suing Guess over alleged trademark infringement. Guess says the lawsuit has no merit. Armand, who never made much of a mark, quietly departed a decade after Georges, following a medical leave. That left Maurice and Paul, but Maurice stepped down from his role as co-CEO with Paul in 2007, becoming a chairman while also focusing on his 55-acre Napa Valley estate and winery. He reduced his role further in 2012, officially retiring as a guest executive. Paul Marciano is credited with the vision of the guest image and is responsible for creating some of the most innovative and groundbreaking images in the history of advertising. Number 13. Guess partnered with Republic Records to launch Guess Music. To launch their music venture, the brand had Republic Records artist Ariana Grande debut her video Side to Side, featuring Nicki Minaj on their website. Ariana wore and introduced Guess' new athletic line in the music video. Viewers even got the chance to shop looks inspired by Ariana's outfits in the video on Guess's Get Ariana's Look merchandise page. Guess Music is a high-energy platform that pairs two industry powerhouses to bring together the world of fashion and music. Guess Music will connect established artists from Republic's rosters and beyond and young emerging talent with designers to create accelerated artistic inspiration and exposure. Number 14. Maurice and Paul Marciano have launched an art foundation. The Marciano Art Foundation was founded by Maurice and Paul Marciano and will show works from the collection by well-established mid-career and emerging artists, predominantly from the 1990s to present. The Maurice and Paul Marciano Art Foundation paid $8 million to buy an opulent former Masonic temple on Wilshire Boulevard, which they turned into a private museum. In addition to housing their collection, Maurice Marciano said the museum would also host exhibitions by local artists, with the hope that they will design work especially for this space. The Masonic Temple was designed by Millard Sheets, the Southern California architect and muralist. It served the Masons from 1961 to 1994 and has been on and off the real estate market ever since. With 90,000 square feet over four floors, it's almost as large as the Museum of Contemporary Art. Number 15. Guess has survived the times with new strategies. Amid falling sales, Guess has been changing its mix of stores by opening new stores in emerging markets and closing underperforming stores. In 2017, the company opened 165 new stores worldwide while closing 124. Working with partners, the company opened 73 stores in Asia, 65 stores in Europe and the Middle East, 13 in the US, 7 in Canada, and 7 in Central and South America. 
Guess also unveiled a worldwide cost reduction and restructuring plan in 2017 to better align its global cost and organizational structure with its strategic initiatives. This included the consolidation and streamlining of business processes in addition to a reduction in its global workforce and other expenses. How many pieces of guest clothing do you have in your closet? Let us know in the comments below. Still with us? Of course you are, Aluxer. As a reward for sticking with us all the way to the end, here's a bonus fact just for you. Camila Cabello is the newest spokesperson for the Guess brand. She's even sporting Guess jeans in her music video for her hit song, Havana. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.